My name is Sam Baknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. Today we're going to discuss voucher communities. Voucher communities are one solution for unemployment, especially youth unemployment. Youth unemployment exceeds 20%, a whopping 20% in many parts of the European Union, China, Africa, Asia and throughout the Middle East, in short, in most parts of the world. In hundreds of cities, in two dozen countries, a fascinating experiment is proving that tackling unemployment effectively may require little more than imagination and institutional collaboration and commitment. Voucher communities. These are communities of unemployed workers organized in each municipality. The unemployed exchange goods and services among themselves in a barter-like or counter-trade system. They use a form of internal money, a voucher bearing a monetary value. And so an unemployed electrician can offer his services to an unemployed teacher, who in turn gives the electrician's children private lessons. They pay each other with voucher money. The unemployed are allowed to use voucher money in a variety of other ways, for example, to pay for certain public goods and services, such as healthcare and education. Voucher money is redeemed or converted into real money, so it has no inflationary or fiscal effects, though it does increase the purchasing power of the unemployed. Vouchers are regulated by a clearing authority. The clearing authority has four functions. Number one, to issue, print the vouchers in various currency equivalent denominations. Number two, to create and maintain the project's information systems. Number three, to issue laminated plastic and later magnetic striped identification cards to voucher recipients, voucher beneficiary ID cards. Number four, to provide binding dispute settlement and resolution mechanisms and forums. In some countries, vouchers issued by the clearing authority can be used to defray expenditures related to education and healthcare and to pay local taxes. This is subject to agreements signed between the clearing authority and the relevant local and state authorities, of course. The Employment Bureau provides the clearing authority with information about the status of applicants. Are they truly unemployed or not so? Pursuant to the receipt of written release, of course, from the applicants. Some clearing authorities uh, act as employment agencies. They match job seekers with employers who then proceed to pay their employees in vouchers. In these cases, the clearing, authorities provides employee, the clearing authority provides employees with employers with vouchers on condition that they are used to employ the hitherto unemployed beneficiaries. What is exactly a voucher, though? The voucher is a contract between service providers. It contains the following elements and components. Number one. It is headlined contract between payer and receiver to render services. Number two, a denomination, how many currency units the voucher represents, known as value store. And number three, the serial ID or registration number of the voucher hall of the voucher. The vouchers are distributed to the unemployed and the homeless in order to enhance their purchasing power and enable them to resume an economically productive role in society. The total sum of vouchers distributed to any given recipient or beneficiary should not exceed one third of his or her income from all other sources combined. The vouchers should be distributed once every quarter and expire at the end of the quarter in which they were distributed. The voucher recipients or beneficiaries can use them to pay only for services rendered by other recipients or beneficiaries. They should be allowed to freely negotiate transactions and agree prices among themselves. The clearing authority maintains a central registry in both hard print copy and computerized form, maybe on Excel spreadsheets. The central authority or central registry contains the following data and is indexed in this way. Name of recipient beneficiary, profession of recipient beneficiary and services rendered by him or her, Count contact details 
address, phone number, email of recipient beneficiary, number and value of outstanding unused vouchers in any given quarter. Customers of the service provider are allowed to comment online on the service providers, the voucher recipients or beneficiaries' performance and on his or her conduct. They are allowed, in other words, to rank and rate and review the beneficiary, the service provider. To summarize, each beneficiary recipient of vouchers has a record in both print and computerized forms. The record companies, uh, the record maintain, comprises his or her name, professional qualifications, services rendered, contact details, number and value of outstanding and unused vouchers, and comments and ratings by clients pertaining to the beneficiary or recipient's performance and conduct it render in rendering his or her services. Experience shows that vouchers have both positive and negative macroeconomic and microeconomic implications and outcomes. Start with positive, enhancing the purchasing power of the unemployed and the homeless, restarting the economic cycle in deprived neighborhoods and regions, increasing the psychological well-being and motivation of deprived and dysfunctional strata of the population, and gendering networks of first service providers and customers, which can later integrate into the formal monetized economy. There are no inflationary ill effects and no fiscal ill effects, no budgetary deficits. But there are negative aspects as well. Possible hoarding of vouchers, largely prevented by the introduction of beneficiary recipient ID cards and by the fact that they expire. Vouchers are a form of money substitute. Not only do they subvert the money issuance monopoly of the central bank, but they also demonetize the economy and have no multiplier effects. In other words, vouchers create a parallel system that is detached and distinct from the main money, money supply transmission mechanisms and channels, They're reminiscent in this sense of some crypto assets. This can be overcome by limiting the amount of vouchers in circulation and their duration, expiry or maturity date. The whole operation should be carried out in coordination with the central bank and with the Ministry of Finance. It's one more weapon in the arsenal of fighting unemployment.